The topic is how to achieve your goal or goals. The singular form we all know is goal. The plural form is goals. So how to achieve your goal or how to achieve your goals? Um, I want to share with you just 20 tips on how to achieve your goals. Just 20. And I can't claim that these 20 tips that I'm going to share with you are exhaustive. I mean, I can't exhaust everything relating to this topic. So that's why I'm going to limit myself, uh, myself to only 20 tips. Tip number one. Let's set the ball rolling. <laughs> Tip number one. First of all, define your goal. Define it. Your goal or your dream or your ambition. In other words, set your goal. You have to be very clear about your dream or dreams, your goal or your goals, your ambition or your ambitions. For example, if I say I want to be a journalist, then what kind of journalist? A radio journalist? A TV journalist? Or a newspaper journalist? Do you understand? Yes. So my goal has to be well defined. Don't just say, um, I want to be rich, or I want to be educated, without defining, or without being clear about what kind of education, about um, what kind of um, of riches or what kind of wealth etc etc do you understand yes. number two have a written plan of action after you have defined your goal or ambition lest I forget Dangwati we all know him the richest person in Africa says if you don't have ambition you shouldn't be alive if you don't have ambition, you shouldn't be alive. So this means every human being is supposed to have ambition. It's good to be ambitious, but it's bad to be over ambitious. We have people who are ambitious and we have people who are over ambitious. So it's good, it's positive, it's commendable to be ambitious. But it's it's greedy it's condemnable <laughs> we can say that it's it's terrible it's not acceptable mm. it's immoral mm. to be over ambitious mm. if for example now you say um i want to be the richest person in the world i think you have been over ambitious mm. <laughs> or if you say i wish um I could chance upon one million naira this evening while I'm on my way home. It's two million there. <laughs> you have been over ambitious. Okay, let's come back to tip number two. Have a written plan of action. After you have defined your goal or your ambition, then you need to have a written plan. Not just a verbal plan, a written one. And the importance of writing um, a plan of action is that it gives you some sense of commitment. Mm -hmm. When you write it, when you engage in the process of writing, of writing it, then it gives you some sense of commitment. You feel that you are committed uh, to your goal or your ambition or your dream. Do you understand? So don't just have a plan of action verbally. Put it in writing. Because putting it in writing is the starting point. 
is the beginning of your journey towards your ambition. This is very important. Tip number three, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. For example, you want to be like Nongwati, or you want to be a very rich person, a very rich business person, but you're not doing any business. Are you honest with yourself? You want to be a governor, but you have not engaged in any form of politics. Because you cannot be a governor unless if uh, there is a military rule. But, but in a civilian setting like this one, there is no way you can be a governor <laughs> without involving in politics. Yes. Do you get the point? Oh, you want to be the richest farmer, the richest farmer in Kano State, but you don't have a farm. You don't go to farm. So be honest with yourself. Number four, this is very important. Pray to God. If you want to achieve your goal, don't relent in praying. I read a book. The book was written in America. And the book talks about um, the attitudes, the approaches of different uh, rich people around the world, especially in America. Their approaches, their attitudes, their styles of life, etc., etc. One thing that they all share in common is this, uh, this aspect of praying to God. Mm. Ask God or pray to God to give you the strength mm. and the wisdom to achieve your goal. Mm. Whether you are Muslim, whether you are Christian, whether, mm. <laughs> whether you are, you are uh, uh, a Hindu, whether you are Buddhist, <laughs> whatever you are, mm. pray to God. Because we are Muslims, pray to Allah. Mm. Tip number five, quickly. We don't have ample time. Mm. Learn from the masters by reading or by asking questions. Learn from the masters. The words of Michael Jackson here are relevant. He says, the greatest education in the world is watching the masters at work. Mm. Chinua Achebe, we all know him. Mm. The author of Things Fall Apart. Mm. He never took a course in creative writing. Mm. He just read tons and tons of novels. Mm. And finally, he emerged as a novelist. Mm. Yes. Shuinka also. Many people. With the exception of uh, this guy from Ghana, IUK Ama. Yes, I equate Ama study creative writing as a course. Okay? So, many writers, many journalists, uh, many actors, many singers, many dancers did not undergo any formal training. What they did was to emulate the masters. All, all an actor needed to do, um, for example, who? Aminu Allah, for example. Before he started singing, he's my friend, he told me this. Before he started singing, um, he used to listen to the songs of Tanguero, the songs of uh, Shata, yes, the songs of different singers. And one day, he said, let me give it a trial. Mm. He did it, and he succeeded to some extent. Mm. And many artists started in that way. There are many famous journalists who have, who have never taken any course in journalism formally, mm. but they are master journalists. But I'm not discouraging you from professionalizing your area of interest. I mean, from 
professionalizing your career. If you have chosen a career, um, I want to be a journalist or I want to be a lawyer. Of course, you have to go to school. But remember, there are thousands of people who have, who have become journalists and they have never taken any course in, jo in journalism. There are thousands of, of, of actors who have become successful actors and they, they've never taken any formal training in acting. Keep this in mind. So the best person, the wisest person, is the one who combines the two. You learn from the masters, and at the same time you seek knowledge. You go to school, you read. Tip number six, move out of your comfort zone. Move out of your comfort zone. You know comfort zone? Okay, now, you are satisfied with your current situation. You are complacent, okay? You are happy with what you have. You are comfortable. So you feel that it's not necessary for you to move out of that situation because you are happy, you are comfortable, you are complacent. No. You need to come out of your shell. If you want to achieve your goal, you have to think outside the box. You have to come out of your comfort zone. Example. When Dangote um, started his business, he saw that Kano was not conducive to his business. He was born and brought up in Kano. Mm. So you see, Kano was his comfort zone. Mm. But he realized that Kano was not conducive to his business. You know what he did? He said, let me move to Lagos. And he moved to Lagos. And Lagos then was not his comfort zone. He left he, Kano, his comfort zone, for Lagos. So this tells you to, to have a sense of adventure. You need to be adventurous. You have to go out. You have to come out of your shell. Okay? Um, uh, you have to hit the road. Meaning, you have to be on a journey to success. Because success is a journey. This is what Brian Tracy always tells us. That success is a journey. So you have to hit the road. Okay? You have to be on a journey to success. And, you know, a journey involves movement. Mm. You can't make a journey without moving. Mm. Another example, this is personal. Mm. Some years ago, in Kaduna, I started presenting uh, the program Creative Writing. But in Kaduna is called English for All. Mm. In Kano, we all know it. It's called Creative Writing. So I started presenting the program there. And then people started asking, asking me, started requesting me to open a class there. But I was reluctant. <laughs> because Kano was my comfort zone. I was reluctant. Mm. I had some fear, some apprehension. Mm. Okay? But finally I said to myself, um, let me move out of my comfort zone and establish a class in Kaduna. I did that. And the class is now well established with about 1,000 students there. If I hadn't come out, or if I hadn't moved out of my comfort zone, would that be possible? Number seven, expect failure at first. Expect failure. Or failure, I should say failure. <laughs> expect failure at first. Another personal example. When I wrote my book, Dependable English, it didn't sell. Yes, uh, somebody helped me print it. I needed uh, 25,000 Naira. I had only 10,000 Naira. A friend of mine gave me a donation of 10,000 Naira. My father gave me 5,000. I managed to have 25,000 Naira. We got the book printed. 1,000 copies came out and people were not very interested in them. 
Yes, I, I could not even break even. Okay? But, I never gave up. I kept going. And I wrote another book, New Way of Learning English. You all know it. I wrote New Way of Learning English, which was my second book. And you all know that New Way of Learning English was my second book. And you all know that New Way um, is translated into Hausa, English and Hausa. We, uh, it's a bi bilingual book. So when it came out, students noticed it and they said, ah, this is brighter grammar in Hausa. And it starts to sell like hot cakes. And in no time, I became <laughs> not very rich, but rich. <laughs> because I was capable, I was capable, I was capable of printing more than 5,000 copies. <clears throat> so if I was discouraged by the performance, <laughs> if I had been discouraged by the performance of uh, dependable English, would I be able to produce new way of learning English? So expect failure at first. Eight, do what you love to do. Do what you love to do. So this is about passion. P A W -S, S I O N. Passion. B yes. If you are not passionate about what you do, then you will not do it with energy. You will not do it with vigor. You will not do it with enthusiasm. You will not do it with alacrity. Because you are not passionate about it. So, if you want to pursue a career, make sure that you have passion in it. You are passionate about that thing. You love what you do. And do you know why I have succeeded in the English learning industry? <laughs> because it's now an industry. It's an English learning industry. Because we also have a film industry. So now in Kano, in Northern Nigeria, we have an English learning industry. <laughs> one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why I succeeded was the fact that English was my passion since I was a kid. In primary school, I loved English. I remember while I was in primary five, I would read a storybook and fish out some words and take them to my teacher to give me their meanings while I was in primary five. When I was in secondary school, yes, um, the library became my bone companion, my close friend. And whenever I had somebody speaking English on the radio, I would pay my attention to it. My ears would prick up. <laughs> you see? So I had passion for it. And in 2002, I established Jammaji Evening Class here at Dandogo Primary School. Dandogo Primary School. I established it there, and uh, nobody paid me, okay? Um, they studied for free, free of charge. But I continued because I loved what I was doing. And then in 2005, I made a big decision, the decision to establish Jamaji English Club. Jamaji English Class Club, sorry, metamorphosed into Jamaja English Center, and Jamaja English Center metamorphosed into um, Jamaja Academy. In those days, in 2005 again, I was not uh, gaining any, uh, driving any financial benefit uh, from, from the activities that I was doing. But I was engaged in those activities because I had passion for them. You may ask uh, Anas Kampa. Anas Kampa was one of my students then. He would, he would tell you whether they paid me or not. They didn't pay me. Okay? So make sure that you pursue a career that you are interested in. Because when you have a passion for something, is that passion that keeps driving you. Mm. It's that passion that keeps motivating you. Mm. 
and you will never give up because you have a passion for it. Tip number nine, quickly. Do something every day that will move you towards your goal. Do something every day. Remember, you have a written plan. So do something every day. Every day that will move you, that will propel you towards your goal. Okay? That's how Europeans do. That's how white people do. If a white man says, um, I want to achieve so so goal, you not just sit by, you make sure that he's committed to the goal. So do everything, sorry, do something every day that will move you towards your ambition. Don't relax, don't sit by. Number 10, practice makes perfect. We all know this. Practice makes perfect. I'm sure the way I'm speaking English now is not the way I spoke English 10 years ago. My ability to speak English now has improved. And I hope next year, or in three years' time, my ability to speak English will double my ability to, <laughs> of speaking English now. Because practice makes perfect, because I keep practicing. So likewise, whatever you want to be, whatever goal you want to achieve, you have to practice it. Practice makes perfect. But I know when it comes to learning English specifically, people are shy. They don't want to practice. And remember, English is a tool. You want to be a lawyer? English is your tool. You want to be a journalist? English is your tool. Um, you want to be a businessman? English is your tool. Even if you want to preach, even if you want to be a preacher, an Islamic preacher, you need to know some English. Because English, according to Dr. Bala Muhammad, Wallahi has become a larura for us. <laughs> it's a necessity. It's a necessity. Number 11, tip number 11. Everyone is afraid. Feel that everyone is afraid. Okay? If you are committed to something, yes, you feel some fear. You feel some doubt. But relax. You're not alone. Everyone is afraid. The question is, how do you overcome your fear? Any public speaker is shy of speaking. Even the Masani of Kanu, the let Masani, may Allah have mercy on him, was afraid to speak. He was afraid to speak. He was shy. But he always overcame that fear, that shyness. And there are, there are ways of doing that. Um, we are not having a lecture on, on uh, public speaking. If this was a lecture on that, I would give you a, a detailed uh, uh, lecture on it. But the point is this. Whoever wants to do something, for example, um, an actor is afraid before um, a scene starts before the director says action. An actor is afraid. Okay? A politician is afraid or feels fear before he starts delivering a campaign speech. A footballer is shy or is afraid or feels fear before the match starts. So this is natural that everyone feels fear but do not be discouraged. Do not be deterred by that fear. Do not allow it to defeat you. Try to overcome it. If you read my book titled uh, English for All, there are tips on speaking in public. You will see some of the ways that you can adopt, some of the methods that you can use in order to overcome your fear as far as public speaking is concerned. And fear does not exist only in public speaking. It exists in all our careers. Number 12, never give up. Be determined. Never give up. You remember the example. I wrote dependable English in the beginning, but I never gave up. You see? I went on and produced 
the second book, The New Way of Learning English. So never give up. And remember, expect failure at first. And you, you know what? Sometimes, when you are very close to achieving success, you give up. Mm. Just, you are a few inches to success. Mm. You are a few inches to achieving your goal. Mm. Very close to achieving your goal. But you give up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know this? Yeah. It has happened several times. 13, be flexible. Don't be rigid. The opposite of flexible is rigid. Don't be rigid. Be flexible. What do I mean? If, for example, you have a plan of action and there is a problem, something is wrong with that plan of action, okay? You can change your method. Do you get the point? You have a plan of action and something is wrong with it there is a problem what are we going to do you have to change your method you have to be flexible don't say um, this is my original plan of action and i will stick to it no matter what if you do that it's crazy you have to be flexible even the revelation of islam was flexible islam did not say stop taking alcohol overnight what did islam say it said do not to attend congregational prayers while you are intoxicated mm. one thing led to another until when a verse was revealed prohibiting taking alcohol mm. so be flexible mm. don't be rigid don't be static be open to new ideas, to new information. Be open to new styles, new methods, new plans of action. 14. Mingle with the right people. Mingle, mix, associate with the right people. There is a, an English proverb. It's very famous. Which says, a man is known by the company he keeps. A man is known by the company he keeps. You want to achieve your goal. You want to be a lawyer, for example, but you are always arguing with the people on football. For example, you are always wasting time talking about football. Or you want to be a journalist. You want to be as rich as Tanguati. Instead of mingling, with like-minded individuals, business people, you always mingle with the endeavor. Facts. Or you always uh, mingle with, 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 with kidnappers or people who play cards. And things of that nature. Okay? That, that will not help you. It will not help matters. So make sure that you mingle with the right people. Meaning people who will inspire you. When you mingle, with the right people. They will always inspire you. They will always motivate you. If you want to be able to speak English very well, whom are you supposed to mingle with? People who are interested in learning English also. Yes. Um, talk to them because they, they are like-minded individuals. They want to learn English also. So speak to them in English. But if you say, I want to be able to speak English, but uh, you are always found in a cycle of people who hate English, or people who cannot speak even a bit of it, or people who discourage you when you speak English, they say, Muba, Tura, Muka, Kemana, and things of that nature. Muba, Masa, Wana, Wula, Kemana, Kagali, or you want to show off, Kana, Sukan, Namana, okay? So when you mingle, <laughs> with such people then tell me is it possible is it practicable for you to be able to speak English because remember practice makes perfect you see I'm sweating but no problem I can manage to the end 15 tip number 15 
Manage your time effectively. Time management. Yes. Uh, no right thinking person would afford to embezzle or to squander his old hard time. They say time is money. If you have uh, a sense of time, you are conscious about time, then it's an indication that you are serious about achieving your goal. If people, if serious people want, want to uh, measure the level of your seriousness, they will test you on time management. For example, you want to attend an interview. You want to be employed, and there is an interview that you have to attend before you are employed. Okay, they will tell you, um, uh, uh, come to the, the interview venue at nine o'clock. Yes, oh, thank you very much. Or, or, or this way, I'm, I'm okay. They will say, come to the venue at nine o'clock. Okay? And they have set a trap against you. They want to see how serious you are about time. If, for example, you turn up at 9.15 <laughs> or 9.30 or 10 o'clock, then from there, from the beginning, they have concluded that you are not serious. Not just you are not serious about time, but you are not serious about being employed. That's why in, in the West, they say making time. If, for example, you attend a meeting or you attend a birthday party, they will say, thank you for making time to be here. Do you know why? They feel that time is something that you can make, that you have control over time. They think in these terms, they think that time is controllable. It's something that you can control. But in Africa, the reverse is true. Because we feel that we can't have control over time. That's why we have this notion of what? African time. I'll give you an example. From London to Cambridge, they said the train would leave the platform at 4.59. The train would leave London, King Cross Station, at 4.59 from the platform. I um, caught the train, meaning I, I went into it and sat down before the time. I was already there seated with other passengers. I think I was there about 4.30 and the train would leave at, remember, 4.59, 4, uh, one minute to, to five. So I was already seated uh, with other passengers on the train. Then it was 4.50, I looked at my watch. And I said to myself, let me see if these people are really serious about time. Um, 4.55, the train did not start moving. 4.56, 4.57, 4.58, 4.59, and the train started moving. And I said, yes, these people are really serious about time. And the notion of African time does not exist here. It also happened from Cambridge to London. I took another train. The train would leave the platform at six, no, one minute past seven, 7.01. And at 7.01, one minute past seven, the train started moving. You see? So time management is essential to success. 16, think positively. Think positively. This is what we call optimism. Mm -hmm. Feel that you can do it. If you feel that you cannot make it, you cannot do it, if you feel that you are doomed to fail, if you feel that you are traveling the road to disaster, then exactly that will happen to you. So don't poison you are thinking with negative ideas. Feel optimistic. 
Because positive thinking is what makes many successful people what they are. There are people who are not supposed to be successful by, uh, by means of, of their work. But they are successful because of their positive thinking. It's that positive thinking that, that always drives them. It's that positive thinking that always keeps them moving. Okay? Um, president Buhari, for example, um, ran for presidency in 2003. Mm -hmm. He did not get it. He ran again in 2007. He did not get it. He ran again in 2011. He did not get it. But he was optimistic that one day he would become the president. He lost it three times. And in 2015, he became the president. The same applies to the former president of Brazil, Silva, Silva de Lula, Lula of Brazil. He also ran for the presidency in Brazil three times. And at the fourth attempt, he succeeded, just like President Buhari. So, if you think positively, that positive thinking has a power. And that's why um, motivational writers talk about the power of positive thinking. So positive thinking has a power. And that power keeps you moving. That power fights for you until you succeed. Tip 17. Keep your words and, action and actions consistent. Keep your words and actions consistent. You know, there are people who are very dreamy. They are dreamy. What do we mean? They always say, it, I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to do this. I want to do that. They are dreamy, but they don't match their words with the action. Remember the proverb, actions speak louder than words. The best person is he who acts without speaking. The better person <laughs> is he who speaks and then acts. But the worst person is he who speaks without acting. You are good or you are better if at least you say or you practice what you say. You say th something and you practice it. You match your words with the action. But you are the best if you just act without talking. And that's why we say actions speak louder than words. So if you have to talk, talk. There's no problem. You talk. But make sure that your words and your actions are consistent. They go hand in hand. People who always talk and talk and talk are described as dreamy. They just have the dream. They are dreamy. Okay? But people who talk and act or people who don't talk and act are called practical. So be practical rather than dreamy. Number 18. Be a person of self-discipline. You cannot reach the top without self-discipline. Because it's like terbiya. Is this self-discipline? This is very important. Is this self-discipline that allows you to be patient? Because patience is a feature of people who have self-discipline. Is this self-discipline that tells you to be honest? Can you succeed without honesty? You can't get anywhere without honesty. Because when you start climbing the ladder, some people there will realize that you are not honest. And they will dump you. It's this sense of discipline that will tell you to be incorruptible. So self-discipline is a key ingredient of success. I know someone, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, but I don't have to name names. I established a school here in Kano. 
He established another one somewhere in northern Nigeria. We started together. We graduated from UK together. We studied the same course. And mine flourishes. But his own collapses. And then we started um, thinking about the causes of his downfall. And then we came to the conclusion that his, his lack of self of discipline, indiscipline, lack of sense, uh, lack of self discipline caused his downfall. Because, for example, now, when you say, um, I have established a school or I have established a class, you can enroll your children or you can enroll yourselves, and then people come. For example, they buy the food. And you say the registration fee is also amount. And you say, I'm going to teach your, you tell the parents, I'm going to teach your children for, for three months at the cost of 10,000 naira, for example. And after two months, you tell the parents that this is the end of the time. You need to pay more. A person who does that, tell me, does he have self-discipline? He doesn't. Or when you say, um, parents or, or, ch or children, tell your parents to bring more money. Tell your parents to give you money for so so things. And they tell their parents, Father, um, my school teacher or the principal or the head teacher says that we should bring social amount for social purpose. And the children bring the money. And you use the money for a different purpose. You divert it. Is that self-discipline? No. So you see, it's that self-discipline that always forces you to be patient to be honest, to be incorrectable, to avoid all manners, all forms of vices. This is very important. Number 19, which is second to last, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Whatever you pursue, whatever career you pursue, you have to be knowledgeable about it. I know someone who is not highly educated, but he says, I am an, an electrician. And he always reads books that are related to that field okay um, he, he hasn't studied um, electric engineering he, he has studied something different but he is now a practicing electrician so because he knows that he has never studied the course at college or university he always updates himself by reading books and even if you study a course for example, you are a lawyer and you studied law. So for you to keep being a successful lawyer, you need to always update yourself. You need to always be knowledgeable about it because um, new information, new knowledge, new ideas keep coming up on a daily basis. So if you study law, for example, 10 years ago and you don't do any reading, in relation to law. You will cease to be a lawyer. So whatever a career you are pursuing, whatever profession you are practicing, you need some knowledge based on it. You don't have to be highly educated. You don't have to have a university degree. You don't have to have a master's degree. You don't have to have a PhD. But make sure that you have some knowledge on that aspect, on that career, on that profession, and keep yourself knowledgeable about. It's not a matter of saying, okay, now I'm satisfied with the state of knowledge, with the amount of knowledge that I have now. It's okay. No, this is crazy. If you think in these terms, you are doomed. Knowledge is something that you seek from the cradle to the grave. Seeking knowledge never stops. 
it's endless. Um, whether you are a carpenter, whether you are an engineer, whether you are a menene, whether you are a welder, whatever you are, you have to seek knowledge in relation to that field. And it's that knowledge that will keep you thriving, that will keep you flourishing. Do you know why Alunhu is still there in Kainiwood? He has been in Kainiwood for many, many years now. His contemporaries, contemporaries have become history. They have collapsed. They have fallen apart. But Alunhu is still there. And the scenario shows that Alunhu will be active in Kainiwood as long as he is alive. Because he's knowledgeable, mm. he's educated, mm. and he applies his knowledge appropriately. Mm. That's the secret. Why is Adam Isan going up? His career has fallen apart. <laughs> <laughs> you see? It's a perfect example. Sorry if there are fans of Adam Isan. But his career is in a jeopardy. So what has sustained Alinu in Kanyut? His knowledge. His education. Finally, disappointments. Tip number 20. Disappointments. Which is that? One. Obstacles. Setbacks are inevitable. They are unavoidable. Oh, no. <laughs> they are inevitable. They are unavoidable. Disappointments, obstacles, and setbacks are unavoidable. And whatever profession you are practicing, whatever career you are pursuing, one day you will be confronted with the disappointments, obstacles, setbacks, bottlenecks, hiccups, snacks. To now, if you are confronted with disappointment, are you going to give in? Are you going to quit? So they are inevitable. You can't avoid disappointments. You can't avoid obstacles. Dole dole kaade de chikas. But the answer is in you. How do you overcome these setbacks, these disappointments? How do you overcome them? And you have to be creative. You have to be wise in order for you to succeed in pulverizing all the challenges all the setbacks, all the obstacles that stand in your way. Thank you.